What's up, future respiratory therapist? Hey, so there seems to be some confusion out there um, in the world of learning mechanical ventilation, specifically when it pertains to waveforms. Okay, now I did a video back in February that was over the breakdown of the scalar graphics, but that video was more focused on troubleshooting the scalar graphics. It wasn't on using the graphics to identify and to understand the different types of modes of mechanical ventilation. So today's video is for you guys out there that are struggling right now to try to learn modes and recognize modes in conjunction with your waveforms that are present, okay? So we're gonna jump into this. My 13-year-old uh, daughter has a message for you up here. She says, hello, future RTs. Comment down below if you see this. So she may be making a cameo for us here in a little bit. We'll see if she uh, works up the guts to show up or not. So, anyways, um, first of all, we're rounding out summer, so I hope everybody's excited about that. Those of you that are in school now seem to be uh, entering into your, um, possibly your final year of respiratory therapy school, which means essentially nine to ten months from now, you're going to be uh, working as a res registered respiratory therapist as you finish out and complete your MBRC exam. So I want to congratulate you on uh, rounding out your first full year. Of respiratory therapy school any of you four-year program students whatever semester you're in another one's under the, under your belt so congratulations and there's probably some people out there on YouTube right now trying to get a head start on uh, what's coming what they're about to get into and so I want to welcome all of you guys to the, the, the RT community as you get excited to start your venture as a respiratory therapy student on your way to becoming a respiratory therapist for you newcomers this video is not for you Okay, this video is for um, second year students who are learning mechanical ventilation or have already learned it and struggle with some of these concepts. So here we go. The first thing you have to understand when you're talking about waveforms, okay, and when you're talking about mechanical ventilation waveforms, is it all comes back to understanding what is set and what varies. Okay, so we're going to break it down like this. So I'm going to put on the board here um, volume control and pressure control okay and then I'm gonna put set and then I'm gonna put varies okay and we're just gonna make this a little box and I'm gonna get rid of this marker because it does not work very good so we're talking about volume control and pressure control and all we're gonna do here is review primarily what is set and what varies and I'm not gonna talk about FIO2 or PEEP Okay, because those are essentially with every mode of mechanical ventilation. Okay, I'm just talking right now about the mechanics of how the mode works when it's delivering a breath. Okay, so in volume control, you guys already know that we set a tidal volume and we set a flow. And when we set that, okay, what varies is our PIP and our I time varies based off of these settings. Okay, so if you change flow, you'll change your I time. If you change tidal volume, you'll change your I time. Okay, now in pressure control, we set our PIP and we set our I time. And guess what varies? Our tidal volume and our flow. Okay? As compliance changes in pressure control, our PIP will remain constant, our I time will remain constant, and our tidal volume will vary. Our flows will also vary according to what's needed to sustain that pressure for the set I time. Okay? So I think this chart is neat when you break it down and really look at it that volume control and pressure control are essentially, okay? at least on the surface level, the exact opposites of one another. Okay, a lot of ventilators, the tidal volume control setting, when you switch it to pressure control, it becomes the peak inspiratory control. And flow in volume control, when you switch to pressure control, becomes the I time setting. Okay, so this is interesting. Look, it's just inverted. Volume control, we set tidal volume and flow. PIP and I time varies. Pressure control, we set PIP and I time, tidal volume and flow varies okay first place we got to start because if you don't understand that then the waveforms mean nothing okay now let's bring the waveforms into this 
when you're in volume control and you're looking at your waveforms, okay, in volume control, your tidal volume waveform should be consistently the same because we set the tidal volume. Your flow should be consistent every single breath. Now, this is just talking in general volume control. We're not talking any patient-initiated breaths yet. Okay, we'll get into that in a minute. Okay, but here you'll have a flow set. You'll have a flow pattern set, and the breaths will look identical when it comes to tidal volume and flow. But your peak inspiratory pressure is what will vary from breath to breath. Okay, and in volume control, as you give the tidal volume, the pressure slowly rises until peak inspiratory pressure is met, and then exhalation begins. Okay, now in pressure control, we set PIP. And we hold that PIP for a set I time. So instead of getting a gradual rise in our peak inspiratory pressure, in pressure control, we're going to get a rise in pressure and a hold in pressure, which is going to yield us a square pressure waveform. We're going to look at this here in just a second. I'm going to draw it for you. But I want you to understand, first of all, every pressure waveform will be the same when you're in pressure control because it's set. It doesn't vary anymore. Now, when you look at your tidal volume and your flow, you may see variations from breath to breath. Why? Because they vary in pressure control. Okay? So, we're going to do this one mode at a time, and then we're going to mix in, and uh, I'm going to put a combination of modes up there together, and we're going to break them down. Okay? So, here we go. <clears throat> we're going to start with pressure control. Okay? So I told you on pressure control, this is pressure, flow, and volume. So pressure control, remember what is set, okay? So when it's set, you're going to have at baseline, you're gonna go up to the setting, hold for the I time, back down to baseline. Up to the setting, hold for I time, back down to the baseline. This is your PIP. This is your I time. Both of these were set, remember? So these will be identical. Your flow will be decelerating and then back to baseline. Every And back to baseline. Sorry about that. I'm running out of room over here. Now your tidal volumes will vary. So you may get this. and then you may get this. And that's okay, why? Because pressure remains set, flow will vary in a decelerating waveform to sustain your pressure at that eye time, and volume will vary. So here, maybe the patient coughed, okay? Maybe the patient uh, bit on the tube, maybe they're biting on the tube here, and your compliance went down, or if biting on the tube, your airway resistance went up, okay? And look, same pressure, same eye time, lower tidal volume. What's varying on this? On this waveform right now, what appears to be set? The pressure, right? And what appears to vary? The volume, okay? That's pressure control, guys. Pressure is set, and it'll be a square waveform because you have a set eye time. That's the other thing you have to understand is that in pressure control, what's your cycle? A lot of people say pressure, but it's not. It's not peak inspiratory pressure, it's I time. So pressure goes up and holds. If it was pressure cycle, it would go up. And as soon as it reached the peak inspiratory pressure, it would come down. So you would have a have more of a triangle type um, um, pressure waveform, kind of like with IPPB, which is a pressure cycled ventilator. But pressure control is cycled by I time. So the pressure goes up and holds for the one second, the 1.3 seconds, the 0.8 seconds, whatever the eye time is set on. So you get a square pressure waveform. Anytime you see a square pressure waveform, you have to understand that the vent is controlling pressure in that circumstance, okay? So that's pressure control. Now let's talk about volume control. Now understand, all I'm talking about is the, the overall modes of pressure control versus volume control. In a minute, we're going to break down SIMV versus AC to recognize how to break it down even further. Okay, so I got to get rid of these.
Okay. Now, Alright. Now, remember what is set in volume control. In volume control, your tidal volume is set. So if you're delivering five, let's just say 400, okay, then your tidal volume is going to go up and down. And the next breath comes up and down, okay? And they're both going to be the same. 400. Why? Because we set the tidal volume. Now, when it comes to flow, it is also set. Okay, so let's say we set our flow at, at 60 liters per minute. Now, this can be a square waveform. Okay, and if it is, then all of these will be square waveforms. Okay, whatever you have set. What if I have a decelerating waveform, Joe? Well, then you'll have a decelerating waveform. Okay, and it'll be decelerating. But the peak flow that's delivered will be set at that whatever it's set at. So they will all look the same. Okay, but typically, really on your board exams, when you see a square flow waveform, you know you're talking about volume control. Okay, and your volumes are all the same, it's going to be a volume control. Now, what you have to figure out is, is AC or SIV. Now, look, when we look at our pressure, what we notice is, is that as we give this breath, okay, pressure grows, and then exhalation happens. We give it again, and then exhalation happens. Now, what you notice here is, look, our tidal volumes are set, and our flow is set, but our peak inspiratory pressures are varying and they're no longer square. This is because we're not in pressure control. We are now in volume control. Okay, now here, just like on the previous example, when I told you the patient might have bit the tube and airway resistance went up and that resulted in a smaller tidal volume, well, here in volume control, patient bites the tube, the vent doesn't care, it's still going to give the set tidal volume at the set flow and your pressure is what's going to vary. So these can be kind of all over the place. Okay? That's volume control. Okay? So, now let's do one more that we need to talk about, and then we're going to put some together, and we're going to break them down and see what they look like. Okay? So this is spontaneous. Some people call it spontaneous. It's pressure support ventilation. We have volume, we have flow, and we have pressure, okay? So during spontaneous ventilation, you set a pressure support. So what do we set? A pressure. So guess what? The patient's going to initiate a breath, pressure's going to rise and hold, and then fall. Okay? Rise, hold, fall. Okay? Now, because these are spontaneous breaths, your tidal volumes here will probably be smaller and may vary, okay, because the patient can control how big each of those breaths are, okay? They don't, they're not going to be set 400, 400, 400, 400. They may be 450, 290, 360, 510. They can be all over the place because the patient is truly in control of the amount of volume that they take on each and every breath. Now, the flow typically will be either a sinusoidal pattern, some people shorten it as sign, or a decelerating pattern, okay? But understand that the decelerating pattern is not the same as the, the volume control or the pressure control decelerating pattern. It's much more softer and it's more rounded, okay? It doesn't look like a machine. It looks like a human is actually now generating these breaths, okay? So what we'll typically see here is something like this. Okay, now here's the key. What tells the machine to cut off? Well, it cuts off when the expiratory sensitivity of that breath is met because of the flow decay. So if the peak flow here is 40 
and you have it set at 25%, 25% of 40 is 10 liters per minute. That means that this pressure support is holding until the patient's inspiratory flow drops to 10 liters per minute, which is 25% of their 40. What if they're breathing 80 liters per minute, Joe? Well, then 25% of 80 is 20 liters per minute. But the same concept applies. It's flow decay. And this is what triggers expiratory phase to begin. So once it flow decays, pressure support cuts off. But you still have a square waveform, okay? All right, now, now it's going to get fun. Because now we're going to take PCAC, PCSIV, VCAC, VCSIV, and we're going to sprinkle pressure support in. Okay, so that's where we're going next. Okay, so I'm not going to tell you the modes of these, I'm just going to put them up here and then we're going to break them down together. Okay, so again, volume, flow. And pressure okay now one of the things I haven't been doing I've just been drawing from a baseline of zero but we understand that we can put peep on here and that'll start from whatever level that is so that's what I'm gonna do here we're gonna start at a peep of five okay and we're gonna go like this we're gonna start the breath bring the breath down Okay, our flow looks like this. I'm going to do one thing here. And our tidal volume is going to look like this. All right, so here we have it, okay? Now, what we have to do is ask ourselves what mode of mechanical ventilation are we in, okay? So the first thing we notice is that our pressure waveform is not square, so it's not a pressure, okay? And the pressure varies, especially over here. So clue number one, no, no square pressure waveform then this is not pressure control, okay? So we know we're in VC, okay? But now, are we in AC or are we in SIMV? Well, look, all of these breaths look identical, right? This, this one probably needs to be a little higher. I don't, I'm not, I don't have a level out here, okay? But pretty much, you agree that all of these essentially look the same, correct? And the tidal volumes all look the same, correct? Did the patient initiate any breaths? The answer is yes, right here. So the patient initiated the second breath. This was a timed breath because there's no effort made, and this is a time-triggered breath because there's no effort made. But this one here was initiated by the patient, triggered by either pressure or well, triggered by pressure in this case, okay? And that initiated another breath. Now, what does that breath look like? Oh, check it out. It looks just like breath one and three. Breath two looks like just like one and three, except this tells us the patient asked for it, which tells you that the patient triggered a breath and the ventilator gave an assisted breath, which is the definition of AC. Okay, so this patient is in volume control, assist control, or ACVC. However, you're learning it. If you're learning ACVC first, VC, AC, it doesn't matter. It's all the same. Assist control, volume control, ventilation. Okay, does that make sense? Now, look, I'm going to leave everything up here the same, except I'm just going to change a couple of things here. We're going to make this much smaller. We're going to make this like that. And 
we're going to make this like that. Okay? Now, let's ask ourselves some questions. We have pressure waveform that is not square. Two of the three are not square. Okay? And three varies different from one. So that tells you we can't be in pressure control. So we know right now that we have got to be in a volume control mode, just like we were a minute ago. Okay? Now, what's weird about this, and we know also that because we have square waveform, square waveform, tidal volume, tidal volume, both of these appear to be set. Okay? So we know we have volume control, at least for breaths one and three. But when we look at the second breath, something changes, okay? Our pressure waveform becomes square. Our inspiratory flow becomes sine, and our tidal volume is much different than our set tidal volumes. Now, what you should be thinking here is, how is this working, right? Like, I know if this is square, then it has to be some sort of pressure mode of ventilation. But I can't mix volume control with pressure control. It's not like I got a volume control breath here and a pressure control breath here. No, you didn't. But you did get a pressure support breath there. Now, this is my favorite question to ask in the world. After you get done with your vent assessment, you come in and you, we go over it together. The patient says, I'm in AC. They give me all the numbers. I say, what was your pressure support? And they say, I don't know. It wasn't on the screen. And I say, why wasn't it on the screen? Well, the answer to that question is, is because in assist control, you don't have pressure support setting because there's no true spontaneous respirations. Where in SIMV, in between these set breaths, the patient can breathe truly spontaneous augmented by pressure support. So this is VC SIMV with pressure support. Okay? All right. Let's keep rolling. This video is going to be longer than I thought it was going to be, but that's okay. We're learning, right? I'm going to leave these here. Actually, I'm going to do this like this. I'm going to do this like this. Now I'm going to do this like this. All right, now, let's break it down, okay? Because we've got varying flow patterns, we've got varying tidal volumes, and we've got varying pressure waveforms. Except, the one thing we can say about our pressure waveforms is while they vary, they are all square. What did I say about square waveform patterns? If you have a square waveform pattern, you're in some form of pressure control or pressure support mode of mechanical ventilation. So we know right now that this breath, this breath, breath one and three look identical on their pressure waveform settings, okay? And they have a decelerating flow pattern, and they have tidal volumes that vary amongst themselves. So we know now that we are in pressure control, okay? But what explains this? What's going on here, okay? Well, patient initiated the breath. It's a sinusoidal pattern. It's a super small tidal volume compared to the other two. And a square waveform. This is also a pressure support breath, okay? It's different from your peak inspiratory pressures that are set on breaths one and three. Breath two is a pressure support augmented breath in SIMV pressure control. So we've got pressure control, SIMV, with pressure support. Okay? That tells you it was patient triggered. This tells you the patient was allowed to breathe however they wanted to. The square waveform tells you that it was pressure support augmented. 
Okay, does that make sense? All right. It's pretty much the same. Okay, now we got something a little different here, right? Let's, I'm gonna raise this one just a little bit, so, so nobody gets me any comments about that. It's not the same. Okay, now all three pressure waveforms look identical. Square, square, square. All three of them at the exact same level. All three of them about the same I time. Okay, flow is a decelerating pattern with it coming back to baseline, okay? And then the next breath is also decelerating, okay? That goes with pressure control. And then when we look at our tidal volumes, varies, varies, varies. So this is pressure control. This is pressure control ventilation. And because the patient initiated this one, then that tells us that when the patient initiated, the pressure rose and was held for the set eye time. And so that tells you it's an assisted breath. This is assist control. Excuse me just a second, guys. Hello? What? Somebody's at the door. So pressure control, assist control. Okay? Is the mode of this mechanical ventilation because all of these breaths are being controlled by the machine and pressure control form, okay? Your tidal volumes are the only thing that vary. Now your flow will vary as compliance changes, okay? But um, from here, just remember, a decelerating pattern goes with, decelerating flow pattern goes with, it can be volume control or it can be pressure control, but in this case, when you have a square waveform, you know you're looking at pressure control, okay? I got one more for you here, guys. So we got tidal volume, tidal volume, tidal volume. Okay, we got flow, flow, flow. Now, I could probably stop right here. I could probably stop right here, right? But I'm not because I want you to see the rest. You already know this is sign, sign, sign. What does sign go with? Sign goes with spontaneous breathing. So here we've got. Pressure up, pressure down, pressure up, pressure down, pressure up, pressure down. Why is this square? We're going to have triggers here with each of these, okay? This breath, this breath, this breath, okay? All of these breaths from a pressure setting look the same, right? But that's because this patient is in... Pressure, support, ventilation. So you'll get the square waveform, but because you have a sinusoidal pattern here with varying tidal volumes, all of these belong to the patient. Okay? This is straight PSV ventilation. Now, this one is probably the most challenging because if you look at it compared to the subtle difference, which would just be pressure control, because you can have a patient in PCAC who's triggering every breath. And it'll look just like this, but it won't look like this. If it's PCAC, it'll look like this on the flow. Okay? Patients triggering every pressure control breath, square waveform, set eye time, flow is gonna be decelerating, but can vary, tidal volumes will vary. This is pressure control in the AC mode. Patient is triggering every breath, okay? So how do you know this, guys? You just gotta break it down. Trust your knowledge base. Remember what is set and remember what varies with 
all of these different settings in mechanical ventilation, okay? And you just have to trust, okay, that when you're, when you're going through and, and looking at it, you have to remember what is square, what a square pressure waveform tells you, what a sinusoidal flow waveform tells you, what a varying tidal volume tells you, what all of these things tell you. And trust yourself. If you understand mechanical ventilation, then remember what is set and what varies per each mode, and the waveforms are going to do the exact same thing. Okay? Hey, guys, I hope this helps. If you haven't done yet, hit that subscribe button right up there in the top of the screen, and be sure and check out my next video at the bottom of the screen. Best wishes, guys.